Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. Good morning to everybody as well. So today I wanted to go ahead and state the official uh, rules for the Raid League, Private League for PoE that we'll be playing on. Uh, just to give you guys a little background, if you're unaware of what Private Leagues are in Path of Exile, uh, they are hosted on GG servers. They're totally allowed. Uh, basically, you can pay Gigi a small sum of money, uh, host your private league, and expand the player capacity and duration and add some cool stuff to it. Um, mainly, these are really good for setting up events, pretty much like what we're going to be doing now. So I want to introduce to you guys Raid League, uh, which will be coming out about an hour from now. Um, so, oh God, of course, Mini K starts crying the second I start talking. Um, so the, the point of Raid League uh, is that for me, myself, basically, if you're going to be in my group, uh, it's always going to be a six-man party the first week. I was going to enforce this to everybody, but I decided not to, and we'll explain this if you just basically like read here. Um, so viewers, so this is not me, but viewers may level and play the game solo. However, there will be some rules for progression. Now, I know the point of Raid League is to be in a group, so let's go ahead and get into it. So, uh, for progressing through this private league, and remember, everyone's going to be fresh, it's going to be brand new, Labyrinth must be attempted with six players. If someone dies, you simply continue. Um, so, the point of that is to kind of make it more of a clusterfuck and make it more fun. Uh, remember that Raid League is going to be on softcore, it's not going to be a hardcore league. I'm kind of a little bit done with hardcore and Path of Exile now. Um, all major act bosses must be killed in a group with at least four players. So that means when you're going to kill, uh, it doesn't count for like the minor act bosses, like just like the major ones. So for example, we have uh, Mervale, we have Vol, we have uh, Dominus, Malachi, things like that are going to be with at least four plus players. And if you want to confirm this and stuff, you can always just post a screenshot of like your success in our Discord. Uh, we are going to have a Discord channel. Uh, that I basically have set up already. Uh, we've got a Raid League, um, basically text chat that you can type in. Uh, and then we've got four rooms open. So Syndicate Raids, uh, I don't actually know what these are called because I haven't really done much Syndicate stuff since they finally now just balanced it for like basically in general for hardcore. Uh, but Syndicate Raids, the portals you open from your hideout must be done with at least four players. And this is where it gets a bit more interesting. Pretty much everything will be forced grouping when it comes to bosses for the first week. So this is mainly like when you get into maps, right? After, I'd probably say, you know, most people are going to be entering maps within day one to day three, even if you're a new player, because it's softcore, you know, it's a lot more lenient with the progression. So uh, you must do things with a uh, minimum of four people. Um, if you are, you know, with the uh, regular group or if you're in my group, it's going to be six. So the following. Shaper, Guardians, Atziri, Elder, Ubers, uh, Pale Council, Breachstones, Delve Bosses, Liches, Beastiary Portals, and pretty much anything you could imagine that is like, you know, a separate instance fight specifically for bosses is going to be required with the four to six player limit. Um, now, if one thing to add into this is uh, if you're the person hosting it, it is fair that you were to get the loot, and I don't really think anyone's going to have an issue with that. Um, and then when you get to maps, you must be in a group of four. The focus of this league is party play. Remember to use the public board and our global chat 1138 along with our Discord to find players to play with. These grouping restrictions are only for the first week of Raid League. Now the reason why I'm starting this on a Tuesday, I think that is Tuesday, maybe it's Wednesday, I don't remember. Uh, I think it's Tuesday and not on the weekend as I'm actually going to be leaving uh, to go see Victoria's parents this weekend. Uh, so I'll be gone in Indiana. Uh, after Saturday night, so that still gives like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and even the day of Saturday to have fun in this league and see how it is. So some other things I want to go into is we're going to be using the same rules, disregard this HC tag, uh, we're going to be using the same rules for trading as we did uh, in the previous league we just played. So essentially TLDR, uh, party play is always allowed, right? If playing with another friend slash player, you are allowed to trade items uh, assuming that you are both there in the zone when it dropped. So it's similar to Diablo 3. So for example, you and a friend kill Shaper, you can decide who gets loot. You run a labyrinth with six players, you pop a unique chest, seven uniques pop out, you can all mix and match who gets what. Um, so for actual trading though, outside of like your group on what drops, 
you are allowed to trade unique jewel for unique jewel. We don't want to gate players behind not getting two freeze pulse threshold jewels, for example. Um, if you can't get a unique jewel, remember you can always just vol jewels to get a unique jewel. You can do like Act 2 has a quest for a unique jewel, for example. Uh, also, Helm and Chance are allowed to be traded because I know some people just love farming Uber Lab and it's, I mean, I would, that would be so cool if there was a group of four people that literally were just bros that all just farm Uber Lab together. Uh, and you can trade Helm and Chance, but they must be white. So you're not allowed to trade crafted gear. We want players to craft their own gear. You're allowed to trade Faded Prophecy for Faded Prophecy, for example, My King's Path for Your Dance of Steel. Uh, and vice versa, the baby version for the baby version. Uh, this is again because a lot of people, and you know myself included, like making builds around prophecy items or faded items, and in general they're just pretty good. Um, and I'm probably going to be allowing just in general like breach item for breach item. You kill Ash, you get you know the the baby version of Hand of Wisdom in action, and then you kill, for example, uh, I don't know uh, Zoff, and you get like uh, Zoff's bow and you don't want them but you want to trade them you, i think that's fair you know like it's totally okay to do stuff like that of course if you're unaware feel free to ask a question in the discord or in the channel but for the most part trading is supposed to be extremely selective uh because we want you to craft your own gear we want it to be like a group found league but i don't want to say solo self found because i want people to play together you know Anyway, remember that this is based on an honor system that you don't try to cheat and follow our rules please respect them um and then uh, we will plan, depending on how successful it is, just like the previous one, to add polls. The polls will be posted in the Discord, and you can basically vote for, um, you know, what you want into the game. So, like, for example, say we make a poll. Actually, I don't really hypothetically want to say something can confuse people, so I'm not, I'm not too sure exactly just yet. Now, there is one more thing to go over, and that's going to be our band skills. So, uh, in terms of band skills... I have decided we are going to be banning only a few skills, and I'll explain why. Uh, Arc, Blade Vortex, Glacial Cascade, and Elemental Hit. These are the four skills that will not be allowed to be played during our league. Just to say this, I don't really like saying this, but because people ask me in the stream a lot, well, what happens if you see someone cheating? You can simply just give me a screenshot, give me the information that they're cheating, I just search them on the private league and remove them and that's it, right? But anyway, the purpose of banning these skills and not banning some other skills that are overpowered is there's a lot of new skills that were just introduced into the game. And I don't think it would be right to ban new skills because people want to try the new skills out. Arc is not new. It's been out for a long time. It's broken no matter what you do with it. Let's be real. Traps, totems, mines, it doesn't really matter. You can convert it to Avatar of Fire, have 50% damage. You're still going to do a shit ton of damage. Uh, the reason why Blade Vortex is banned is because it's... Basically, uh, stupid no matter how you play it as well. It's one of those physical skills that physical skills can be converted any way you'd like and can do a number of things. You could play Chieftain, get 10,000 life, use Blade Vortex to clear all content in the game. You could get an Impulsive, play Elementalist, and pop the whole screen in the game. I mean, for the most part, you can do that a lot with Impulsive, but Blade Vortex just gets it triggered really easily. Glacial Cascade is pretty much similar in that regard uh, to how Arc works, except it's a physical skill that you can scale. And then there's also the Elemental Hit, Disregard Scorching Gray. Uh, Elemental Hit is on there. I really can't comment why necessarily. I mean, I know it's broken. I just don't really play bow builds. I haven't really played Elemental Hit since they reworked it. But I know that it, once you get the Threshold Jewels going for it, it's extremely strong. Anyway, like I said, just our opinion on this. There's only four skills to be banned, so don't be super butthurt about that. Um, now, if you want to join our league, remember, you can simply come into the stream chat. Type exclamation mark apply. Uh, we have to actually create the league. The league is not going to be created just yet. It'll be created in like 30 minutes. Once it's actually created, I'll put the link down in the um, I'll put the link in the description on the YouTube video or on the, one of the comments. But anyway, that's pretty much about it. Uh, to go over some builds that I plan on playing for raid league, some of them are going to be resident sleeper. So get ready. Um, so here are some of the characters that I have planned. So one of them, which is actually the one I'm leaning towards, you guys ready? Get get ready. It's actually going to be Warchief Totem. Now, I was thinking of banning Warchief Totem, but the reason why I didn't ban Warchief Totem is the second I was going to ban it, uh, a lot of people on my channel were crying because they said, Pox Melee's dead. How are you going to ban Warchief Totem? That's unfair to them. 
So I said, okay, we won't ban Warchief Totem. Instead, I'll probably play Warchief Totem. The reason why I really want to play Warchief Totem is for two reasons. One, I've never actually played Warchief Totem. I think I played one. It was like a shit Hierophant SSF build three and a half years ago. That doesn't really count. Um, and two, there's that new totem support that allows you to place two totems at once. I could definitely see some interesting synergy between Ancestral Protector, Ancestral Warchief, and Big Boy Warchief Totem. Uh, but more importantly, it's a character that'll get started easily on pretty much no gear. All I gotta do is find a face breaker. If I don't have a face breaker, I can just scale one-handed weapon. And on top of that, because it's a totem build uh, and I'm playing Chieftain, I would get great leech and I have a lot of damage mitigation. Well, a decent amount of damage mitigation. This allows me to do pretty much all the bosses in the game. And as the true softcore experience, I want to stop skipping content and clear all content in the game. There's also one other thing I forgot to mention during Raid League that I don't think is posted on here, so make sure you follow this one. Um, you are not allowed to skip content. So for example, if you are playing in a party and you find a syndicate hideout, you must kill that syndicate hideout. There is no running. The only exception when you're allowed to disengage a syndicate hideout is if you have died from them. Does that make sense? Is that fair? This is supposed to be, you know, the league of aggression. So make sure you're playing super aggro in this league. And it's going to be a lot of fun and I'm really excited and I hope you guys will be too. Uh, some of the other characters I have planned is um, I have a max block agony crawler build here. Uh, I also have the life... Uh, Vortex, no, Life Cold Snap Vortex character as well. Probably going to be playing between one of these three characters, or I'm going to play one of the guys from my build guide document. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I hope to be seeing you guys in Raid League here in the next 20 minutes. Uh, so take care, have a wonderful time, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to see you guys.